Good morning to all here today. Thank you for uh, sharing in this worship together. Um, those that are will be reading the service that will have it delivered and those who will watch it at a later time. May this church be a space where each of us, one, each of us feels safe and respected and a part of God's family, regardless of our age and gender, our so sexual orientation, our body build, our health, and history. As we pray, sing, work, lament, and celebrate, we do so as equal members of God's beloved kingdom. May this time be a sacred hour with God and one another. We turn to some local announcements. We've got uh, on the docket this week, uh, we first pray for uh, some Communities of Faith in our in the Canadian Shield, that is uh, Chisholm uh, United Church in Powassan, as well as Harmony in St. Mark's United Church, Richard's Landing. Uh, hopefully you will be able to join us after, after service today in the lower hall. Uh, we have uh, coffee and conversation at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning, so uh, meet us in the fellowship, the friendship, no, fellowship hall uh, on Tuesday morning at 10. Uh, that would be great to reconnect with everyone. And as well, Tuesday night, we have a folks on the worship committee. Uh, we'll be meeting by Zoom at 7 p.m. We have on Wednesday night, the Family Faith Formation event number two. And we'll be meeting at 6 o'clock. And we're encouraging folks to uh, chat with family, uh, grandkids, uh, folks that are, are visiting perhaps. Um, to, to come out to that event, but make sure that you connect with Faye or Christina to let them know that, that you're coming. Okay? And a note that Wanapate Powwow, uh, First Nation Powwow is on today from noon on, and we, we pray that the, uh, the rain holds off for that event. And just something moving forward, something to think about, if you were on the uh, lay supervision team, uh, there is a, a meeting that will be held in the Fellowship Hall uh, on September 16th. On September 16th from 1 to 3 p.m. we've got some, some guests coming from, uh, a couple of reverends from, from uh, North Bay are coming to do some training with us. So that's great. And what I'm charged about is that we're doing some things back in the building, which is, which is wonderful. That's great. Uh, today's service, before uh, we move into our Christ candle lighting, uh, we're going to spend some time celebrating the United Church, United Church camping. And yes, Camping Sunday was back in May, I think it was, on the calendar. But it's summertime, and this is when it's happening. So this is when we need to talk about it and celebrate. So Faye went last month to MAD Camp, uh, Music and Drama Camp, and to Camp McDougal. I was there last week, and uh, Pastor Di from St. Mark's, will be there this afternoon for this last week of the summer uh, to be the chaplain. So we're going to um, we're going to dive into a little bit of camping uh, this uh, this day. As you can see, uh, the the Christ candle that's uh, that's shown here. This is a. Uh, a piece of rolled birch bark that I found at, on St. Joe's Island our, at our family's lot when we had it. And it was the last time we were there and, and I scooped it up and placed the candle at the base of it and in the evening, wow, what a beautiful, what a beautiful look. So this was lit every day when I did our living and learning sessions with, with the youth this week. So. Once upon a time, uh, a man walked on this earth, and he was an amazing man. And he said amazing things, and he did amazing things. And he talked about what it's like to be a good human, to be compassionate and kind and caring and supportive of one another. And people would come up to him and say, really, like, who are you anyway? And he said, I'm the light of the world. And when we act with compassion and care and kindness and are supportive, we carry that same light inside of us.
So each time we look at the Christ candle, we are reminded of Christ within us and Christ all around us. Every morning at morning watch at camp, we surrounded ourselves around the, the flagpole, which showed the Canada flag. But before we did that, before Canada was ever a nation, we gathered to, to acknowledge the land that we stood on. And today we gather for worship on the land where indigenous people have lived, worked, raised families, traveled, and followed spiritual practices since time beyond our knowing. This church is located on the traditional territory of the Wanapate First Nation, the Anishinaabe people. We lament, we lament the damage that European colonization had on the First Nations peoples, the Inuit, the Métis. And we acknowledge that many indigenous people still today live with intergenerational trauma, racism, and inequity. All who live in this area are parts of the robinson huron Treaty which outlines the shared rights and responsibilities connected to the care and use of this land. As a covenant people, we are called to honor promises. As a church, we have been called to a journey of learning, reconciliation, and reparation. As Christ's people, we are called to love our neighbors. May God support and bless our commitment to live out these calls. Faye and I are now going to share the call to worship. A space to learn and grow. A space to try new things. A space to pass on our story. A space to connect with nature. space to forgive and forget. A space to be still and listen. A space to make new friends and build community. space to connect to God. And a space to just be welcome to worship. Let's join in our opening hymn, Open Our Hearts.
Let's pray. Creator God, we hear your wilderness cry from the depth of our souls and long to answer. We seek you out in the silence and beauty of nature, in the sound of the birds, the rustling trees, the lapping water, and the crunching of branches. Our eyes and ears are opened to your presence in the newness of day, the brisk air, and the colors of the sunrise. Be with us in this time of storytelling and memories, guiding us along the forest's edge into oneness with you. May we follow faithfully the way of Jesus in this and all the paths of our lives. Amen. This time we greet each other with the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you all. So does anyone know what this is? God's eye? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you have no look on the screen. Yeah, that wasn't I think they knew anyway. <laughs> Has anyone made a God's eye? A couple people? Okay. Uh, so does anyone know what it means or where it came from? The origin. Okay. I'm going to get... Uh, I'm going to test Faye and her Spanish I was right, told. right now. What's that? I was told it was Mexican. Uh, Mexican, so, oh, speaking Mexican. No, do Mexican yeah. people? Well, they spoke indigenous languages, but right. then Spanish when they were colonized. Right, okay. So, what would God's eye be in the Mexican language? What Ojos de Dios. Okay, say that again really loud. Ojos de Dios. Yes, that's exactly what, what Faye said. <laughs> so God's eyes, God's eye was first created a thousand years ago, whenever, um, so a long time ago. And the, the Mexican people created the God's eye as a symbol of a prayer to God. So this was their prayer to God. And as they weaved the beautiful colors that the, the Mexican people love so much, uh, they would put this God's eye in their home. And the prayer, the three prayers that they would, that would symbolize the God's eye was one, that we would have, that they would have good health for their whole lives through. For not just themselves, but for their family and their community. They also prayed for protection protection over their home, over their community. They prayed to be protected, that God would protect them. And thirdly, they prayed for good crops, for crops to come up and weather to be good so that they would be able to be nurtured uh, daily in their lives. So those were, the three, those were the three prayers that were weaved together in the God's eye, and God's eye would watch over their families. So this week at camp, one of the days of my living and learning session, I introduced the God's Eye. And we went up to Chapel Rock. And Chapel Rock is a favorite place of mine because from a, a little kid as a camper, right up th to a counselor and on, and now as a chaplain, uh, going up to Chapel Rock is a sacred, sacred place. There still is a, is a cross that's that's wedged between rocks so that it stands up. I did need to straighten it a little bit again. Um, but what, what's beautiful about Chapel Rock is there's a natural seating, like an amphitheater, in the stones, in the, in the hill, where you can sit. And it's like our church. So it's uh, Camp Dougal's Chapel. So we took, I took all the supplies and we went up there. And we talked about what the God's eye is, and there was such, we, I was with 12 to 14 year olds all week, and we completely 
If we are underestimating their abilities to think and be compassionate and caring and thoughtful and, wow, and highly intelligent, is, is that we are not looking closely enough or spending enough time with 12 to 14 year olds. They made a direct correlation to the, to the prayers that are weaved into the God's eye of the Mexican people years ago to their lives right now. And they talked about, it. well, we, we pray all the time. We, we pray for our health. And they talked about their grandma who was sick in hospital and that they would pray. And we prayed for protection. We talk about a world, uh, an ocean away. We talk about wars right here. Uh, we talk about protection when we lock our doors at night. So there was a lot of conversation around protection. And then of course, they easily talked about, and these are unchurched kids. There were out of 60 plus people, I'm talking youth and adults, there were four. Four that knew who God was. Like, it, like that they had a, a handle on it. They, they, they thought that they were, you know, they had uh, some relationship. What they were, that they were saying. So, um, they easily connected to, they had been, we sing um, grace at every meal. And they said, hey, isn't that like prayer to God that, uh, for, our, for our nutrition? So they were easily, easily related to the God's eyes, and then they made, they made the most beautiful God's eyes. Um, this is mine, and, and I used uh, fall colors, which was so sad because, um, <laughs> but I'm gonna hang that up in my, in my house this fall, for this fall. Um, but they picked just incredible colors. And there on our last day, they still, they still wanted to gather and still wanted to make some more God's eyes. They made them for their family. They made them for that grandma who's in hospital. Uh, so that, it was a, a lovely time. So this, was a, this is a sharing of just one activity that we did at camp. And certainly, sometimes, sometimes we have a little, uh, we have some anxieties or we can't sit still and we like to fidget when we're in meetings. I know that Faye loves the color and um, some other people like to doodle or sketch or whatever. Um, so if there is a meeting that we may have in the coming days, maybe at our LSV, perhaps there will be a bucket of yarn and some, some sticks and maybe perhaps we will do, make some, have some movement and some weaving. We sang a, a beautiful song, some of you know it, uh, we sang that every night at campfire, and we sang it after we did, after we had our God's eyes up in Chapel Rock. So we're going to sing just the, just the, uh, the chorus. And
small but mighty singing group we are. Uh, it's time for Thanksgiving gratitude admission and do we have any, uh, I'm going to shout out to folks to see if there's anyone or anything that we need to give local thanks to. I'm glad you're back. <laughs> I am so glad to be here. I have missed you all very, very much. We give thanks for uh, someone who just walked in. <sighs> Is that a Maryland sighting? <laughs> Maryland, it's so good to see you. We miss you. Anyone else? Any other? I'm thankful that my husband might be coming home from the hospital. Amen. Yes. Amen. Today's Minute for Mission. Lindsay Boucher, the United Church's Engagement and Stewardship Associate. She started attending a United Church camp at the tender age of five. There, she not only met lifelong friends and gained job skills as a counselor, but it also helped chart her course to eventually work for the United Church of Canada. She shared that coming from a financially tight background, she said, I'm extremely grateful for the assistance available that, that let my brother and me attend camp every summer. I met so many different people from different cultures and religions. I got to learn their journey of faith, along with my own. And I still keep in contact with some friends for over 20 years. That's 20 years later. She says, one of my most prominent memories was with a fellow 13-year-old camper who told me that she loved camp because she could be herself without any expectations. She said, I'm not the weird kid or the foster kid here. I'm just me. She recounts that that's something I resonate with. Because I wasn't particularly popular in school. But popularity never mattered at camp. And it's beautiful to know that it's a widely shared perception. Children come together in United Church camps across Canada to learn about the gospel in a safe and supportive environment. Through campfire, stories, hiking, music, canoeing, and so much more. Campers gain confidence while enjoying unique activities and exploring their curiosity. At camp, kids and youth learn soft skills like self-confidence, patience, and organization, as well as hard skills like sports and crafts and music. Without the generous support of the United Church people, children and youth who attend camp wouldn't be able to continue to have such affirming, defining experiences. Your gifts through the Mission and Service Fund are deeply, deeply appreciated. Our world is far from perfect, and much less than the king kingdom of heaven. But we trust in God and are called to be the church. Let these gifts reconcile and make new as the Spirit works through us and others. In sharing our abundance, we are reminded that we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Spirit of life, giver of every perfect gift, we offer our thanks for this life and its gifts. Bless these gifts and those given outside this time of worship. May our contributions here and in every part of our lives, our time, our skills, and our money, work towards a world of justice and peace. We pray that it be so through the ministries of this congregation and through the work we do together through mission and service. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're wondering uh, 
hey, why isn't she doing the scripture? Why isn't someone reading the scripture? Um, I'm going to weave it. I'm going to weave some scripture into the sermon. All is the word of God. Let's pray. Oh, loving God. Thank you that you rustled our feathers and you shook us out of sleep to be here today. Have us hear what it is that... Uh, that you've been wanting for us, wanting for us to take. As we breathe in and breathe out, have us settle, settle our bodies. and maybe restless and worrisome minds. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I've shared with you before my love and experience of United Church camp. And I'm sure that, Judy, you can picture yourself at a girl guy camp and the feelings would likely stir in the same way and anyone else who has gone to camp, a church camp or a, a community camp where folks come together. I believe in the importance of summer camp for young people so much, I take full advantage to talk about it uh, and um, how camp can influence and change and enrich a person's life. And I can say this because I know, I know it did mine. During our minute for mission, we heard just now the United Church's Engagement and Stewardship Associate shared the importance of the United Church camp and how camp influenced her life and the lives around her. Children and youth, when I was a camper and now, come from all walks of life and circumstances. The thing and the beauty about camp is where so much of what young people have or don't have doesn't matter. And the homes and the families they come from and their make the makeup and their 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 structure it can be suspended in place when they walk into camp. At camp they can step into a world where Everyone is to be spoken to with respect, care. And everyone has a safe and comfortable bed to sleep on. Everyone gets three delicious meals and two snacks in a day. Everyone gets to participate in singing and laughter and play times, creative times and quiet times. At camp, everyone is reminded of a God of a God who loves them no matter what no matter what even if they are just hearing about this mysterious God for the first time and everyone at camp is reminded that we are small and sometimes our world and problems may be big. Yet we can ask God to help guide us. And every camper has counselors, program staff, and a chaplain 
who are very, very fond of them. The Trinity Choir gave me a gift before I left for camp. It was your voice that singing. Faith let me be recorded. And it was guide my canoe. And I shared this song with the, with the campers. And the words remind, reminded me and reminded everyone of the spirit wind that surrounds and can help us to find our way. We're gonna, we're gonna sing, Guide My Canoe. Encouragement 
and energy for that day. And it didn't take long to see, for me to be able to see and call out the gifts of the counselors and, and, and the staff that were there. So, when a young adult who, who keeps being told, you're here for the campers, that time on that step early in the morning, when it's about them, and someone is calling out their gifts, and they're being prayed over, well, it's contagious. Because then they go and scoop up kids and spend the day with them and have energy. Once that bell's rung, the rest of the camp is wakened from slumber, and youth with bed heads and yawns, sometimes in bathing suits and towels on their shoulders, ready for a pull the road dip, and others still in their PJs, gather around the flagpole for what we call morning watch. This chaplain, like others, lead them in the land acknowledgement and encourage each day that they, they bring their own words and speak the acknowledgement. And as we declare that camp is to be a safe space, not unlike every time this community of faith right here gathers in worship and work right here at Trinity. We sing O Canada, we sing O Canada, we raise the flag, and then as chaplain I would share a short yet energizing reflection on our theme for the day, and we'd sing a song or two. And then I'd do a shout out and there'd be an echo back. Uh, like when I would do a rousing, God is good. All the time. And all the time? God is good. That's a shout out. So every day the shout out would change. And sometimes I'd stick my head through the lodge window when the kids were lining up for, for lunch and they'd hear this bellow from nowhere and I'd need to hear an echo back. Or when they're running down to get their whatever from their cabins and they'd have to stop in their tracks and yell back. As chaplain, you're responsible to lead four smaller groups in a day. You know, like high schoolers when they go from one class to another. Remember those days, rotating? This is where a significant stirring of hearts were shared. Small groups allow to build relationships. And the theme was, well, first to explore who they were. So who are they? Campers reflected on their character traits, how they viewed themselves. Even though as human beings, we have much in common, we are all uniquely special and, know, and known in God's eyes. I still have their pages. I didn't give them back. Because I'm going to put them in the offering plate because <laughs> Um, they took the time to, to look deeply inside themselves and, and name the things that they are. Compassionate, kind, caring, impatient. Um, we, we, had, we had a few um, that were not, not that they were negative, uh, because we did talk about that we can have a negative character trait and it can be a, a positive as well, um, a teaching tool. So um, I'm going to, um, they'll, go in the, they'll go in the offering plate. The small groups also explored what it means to be brave and courageous when things can be hard. And that they feel less afraid with God's help. Sarah Bareilles, I don't know if you know the singer, she sings an awesome song called Brave. And I blasted it one morning at Morning Watch because it's an, it's an upbeat song, but the lyrics are incredible and they speak to the heart of every one of us when we need to muster and find courage to stand up. And sometimes when we stand up, we might be standing alone. Along with Sarah's brave, we looked at Joshua 1.9 in the Old Testament, which had them learning that after Moses had died, 
God looked to Joseph, uh, to Joshua. And he needed him to be brave and courageous. And when things got hard, God reminded Joshua that God would be with him wherever he went. So they connected those, that song to their own bravery, to their own courage. And we talked about some of the situations in our lives when we needed to be brave. One youth shared <laughs> of a tumultuous time. And, he, and this youth needed to call 911 when their stepfather was beating up their mom. It was one of the many stories that were shared in these intimate small groups. Another showed bravery in standing up to bullies on the bus that were picking on their little sister. Each day was deeply rich as they learned more and more about who they were, but also whose they were. The groups considered what it was like to feel the weight of worries and struggles. Or when we, or when they recognized the weight and struggles in someone else. We looked at Matthew 11, 28 to 30, and how Jesus shares that we can come all who are weary, all who are weary and heavy laden. And God will help, him, help to lighten our loads. And our problems can feel lighter. And we each quietly explored the labyrinth and the bag of rocks that we picked up and we walked and moved through it. And if you remember, the labyrinth that was set up here and everyone had a rock on their pew and they held the rock and felt the weight of it and we walked through and then we let that rock sit and we felt the light, lightning of a load. Well, it was something to see in a quiet corner of a lodge when others were coloring and, and talking and, and thinking about their, their personal character traits. There's one, spending time lifting up that heavy bag and watching them take rock after rock out of the bag and feeling weight lifted. And that, that was held in scripture. Later in the week, we explored what it's like to be someone who needs the help of a friend. Or they are that friend who comes to the aid for the rescue of another. We looked at the story of the stretcher bearer. Luke 5, 18 to 20, where four friends grab, they grab the corner of a stretcher where their friend who couldn't walk laid on that stretcher. And the house where Jesus was, everybody wanted to get in on it. Everybody wanted to hear what this Jesus was talking about. They wanted to be healed by Jesus. And these guys had no hope in heck of how to get into that place. So, back in that day, on the roof, there was, the roof would open up. They would take off the thatched grasses or whatever and let the night air in. And they went up to the roof. And they removed the thatch. And they lowered their friend down by the stretcher to Jesus' feet. What an awesome story. And the youth were able to imagine where they were in the story. And they knew that it was like their eyes lit up when they could remember when they were that person on the stretcher and when they were that one holding the corner for their friend. Can we do that? Can we witness that? Can we see that or imagine that when we have been laying on that stretcher or the one on the corner? We talked about this in Bible study last year about being a stretcher bearer. They connected and they got it. So I chose, I chose a theme song for this week, that week that we had. It was, it couldn't have, not, it couldn't have been a better lyric. 
by a, a better songwriter um, that you know and um, that the youth know today. And it's called Lean On Me by Bill Withers. It's an oldie, uh, but certainly a goodie. We're going to sing it now, and we're going to take a close look at the lyrics. So as you're singing it, consider how the youth were supported this past week and how you can be supported in the lyrics now. So picture it. Uh, every, every night, during the day, morning watch, we sang that 30 plus times. We had to. And they're begging for more. Swaying to music, arm in arm, hand in hand. Every night a campfire to end the evening in the darkness where it was safe to let tears roll, to put an arm around a neighbor, to sway and sing to the music. The most beautiful of relationships were budding. Relationships with themselves, with each other, and yes, if they had never known who this Jesus was before, they might just have developed a curiosity to find out a little bit more. United Church camps, camps that are most significant, is an avenue of sharing our lives with each other and our relationship with the Creator. Camp on. Amen. As we prepare for communion, we're going to sing <coughs> Bread of Life <coughs> on the table is set.
We bask in holy mystery under the warm summer sky. We turn our eyes to heaven and proclaim your goodness. And we cannot contain what you've written on our hearts. We share together, most holy one, there is no place you cannot find us and nowhere you don't exist. Your name is glorious. The night before Jesus suffered and died, he and his friends shared a meal together. We do the same each time we gather at this table. After the meal, Jesus held the bread. He thanked God for it. He broke it, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup. We thank God in the same way. He passed it to his friends. We told them to drink and remember me. Gracious God, author of our story, you remind us with the bread and the cup of your life, death, and resurrection. We share in this mystery of faith by speaking your truth. We proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our, and our hope. Our judge and our hope. Lamb of God, boundless love, send your Holy Spirit pour over us and this bread and cup that we may be made one in Christ blanket us in your care giving us strength and faith and love to be your Christ in the world and now holy comforter we remember all those who are absent from this table yet you long for us to share this meal we pray for those who are overlooked, whom this world counts as last and least. We pray for those who grieve and those who are alone. We pray for those who have health issues, challenges, who are victims of racism, oppression, and hate. We pray for those impacted by senseless war, for the refugee, the abandoned, and we pray for those who choose reckless, reckless choices, those who struggle, those imprisoned, those hard-hearted, those with invisible wounds. We pray for the church, God, and all of those ministries that respond with love to this world. We pray for healing to come quickly. We pray for rest in the night. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of those who they love and miss. Pray now to you our silent prayer. And we, we lift those prayers up to you now. Oh God, hear our prayer. We say together, Blessed be these summer days. Let us share the joy of knowing the risen Christ throughout this world. And now we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. 
And we can imagine holding each other's hands as we do that. So put your hands out in that imagining that you are held. Our creator who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is set with bread for the journey, a cup of joy, and a symbol of healing. Oil. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, all things are now ready. The bread of life. You have put your life in our hands. Now we put our lives into your hands. Take us, renew us, and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be with your care still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. Please uh, join me in our final hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold?
today that camp is a gift to us and to the church at large. The stillness of the morning air, the, sur the sureness of the earth as, a, as our foundation. The joy of the lake, the river or stream, and the warmth of community around the fire. All are gifts that we receive at United Church Camps and are just a few of the ways by which we can experience the living Christ in our lives. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. 